So, uh, what is the important characteristic? That rivers were having existence, existence first, and then the Himalayan land is formed. Himalayan mountain range that is formed over there, and therefore we are getting a different structure of these rivers. The path of the river is changing. I try to recollect in history we discuss about that. Uh, in case of Mohenjo-daro and Harappa, uh, one of the cause of destruction of the civilization that was uh, the change of river bed, of the river Indus. So this is the problem. Now we are focusing on rivers originating in Himalaya. They are having number one uh, existence uh, earlier than landform. Then the second thing that these rivers are having throughout the year rainfall or water supply. Say, so, uh, when we are increasing out pressure in ice, the ice start melting up. Therefore, because of accumulation of snow, layers over layers, the lower layer start melting up. And this way, in winter season also, these rivers are having water supply. Then, in summer season, these lower parts of Himalayan, they are losing out their ice because of temperature increases than zero. And therefore, uh, water supply is there. And in this rainy season, obviously, heavy rainfall is there because uh, this Himalayan region from this to this is having height, uh, sorry, length means actually bread, but uh, from here to here, suppose I have to travel, the distance is around 4 to 400, uh, 400 to 450 kilometers. This is very, very, very massive, uh, uh, great area of rainfall, and therefore, tremendous drainage of water as well as silt is there. Except Greater Himalaya, the lower parts of Greater Himalaya, then Poor Himalaya and Shivali, they are having dense forest. And so tremendous organic material is also carried out by these rivers. These rivers are flowing with very high velocity when they are in Himalayan region. And suddenly they are arriving on North Indian plain which is having very, very, very less gradient. What I want to tell, it's simple, we can check out. Uh, so somewhere here, I am saying, this is New Delhi or Delhi. Now, river Yamuna is flowing here, that is coming like that. Then river Ganga is coming like that and in Praya there is confluence. Then river will flow here with distributaries and ultimately reach to Bay of Bengal. Altitude of Delhi is around 200 to 250 meter. But this distance is greater than 2000 kilometers. That means the gradient, I want to tell this thing, this is the place of Delhi and this is 250 meter, then this is 2000 meter plus distance, 2000 kilometer plus distance. So gradient here is more, uh, sorry, very less. Whereas in mountain range, you will get tremendous slopes. Because of snowfall, these slopes are there. And so the velocity of river is much more in mountain region. And suddenly when that river arrives in that plain part, you will get the slow motion of that water and so they, these rivers are flowing very calmly over this region. What is the problem? The kinetic energy of water decreases because velocity, what is kinetic energy? Kinetic energy is equal to half mv square. So velocity decreases, in square of that, that uh, kinetic energy uh, decreases as a result, whatever material that rivers are carrying out from these mountain ranges, that material they are not able to carry for forward. Whereas, if you are going in this Bengal territory, that is earlier Bengal province, 
where slope is much more less. It is almost horizontal and therefore the river is expanding its bed. River bed is comparatively broad as earlier and the material that is carried out that is not able to carry out any of it further and therefore the distributaries are formed and ultimately we are getting nice delta land that delta land is carrying out a good material that is organic material present over there and that's why very high fertile regions are formed over there we are calling that as Sundarban because the plants of the here they are of Sundri the name of that plant is Sundri so we are calling that territory as Sundarban territory which is very very highly fertile region in the world now uh, we are checking out Himalayan system we are dividing into three parts obviously first part river Indus second river Ganga and third river Brahmaputra now first thing I am focusing on river Indus river Indus or that is called as Sindhu river that is very important river in Himalayan system as it is supported by various other distributaries, uh, sorry, uh, other tributaries. Uh, this is having origin in Tibetan plateau. So we are calling this is having origin beyond Himalaya. So beyond Himalaya, but here somewhere, are uh, two lakes, important lakes are there. They are called as Manus Sarovar, Namusam pronunciations or I got different spelling. I don't know which one is the correct because in some books it is given as Man Sarovar. Sarovar is a lake. Man Sarovar. And in some book it is given as Manas Sarovar. So what are that they are saying one is Manas Sarovar, other one is Rakshas Sarovar. Rakshas means giant or evil. So I don't know exactly but in some book it is given as Rakas Sarovar and some book it is given as Rakshas Sarovar. So one is Manas Sarovar and one is Rakas Sarovar. And here there is Mount Kailas, what we are calling as Kailas pilgrimage that is carried out now. It is everything is there in China. And then uh, this river enters any origin in region of Rakas Sarovar. It flows, it enters in Jammu Kashmir and then turns and it reaches to uh, cross out the uh, then it is entering in Pakistan it flows it is having distributary and nice delta line is produced around it run of Kachya is very close to delta line produced by uh, river Indus now river Indus is having important system river Indus is very very important in the sense that whatever India name that is given on the basis of river Indus uh, try to recollect our history part that we discuss the origin of the word Hindu. Uh, say in the Sanskrit, the name of this river is given as Sindhu River, whereas from Persian side, uh, if you observe here, here is the Persia. So from uh, just observe from Persia, suppose somebody is entering in India, either by Khyber Pass or by Bolan Pass, then the biggest river here, that is river Indus, so Sindhu. So they are calling Hindu because they are in language Sir they are not uh, pronouncing Sir they are pronouncing Sir as her and so the name Hindu is given over here that is uh, corrupted as Indus in Greek language and where river Indus is flowing that is India but uh, the thing is that now we don't have that river say so I am showing here uh, this part no doubt this is part of Himalaya or uh, Kailas range but uh, this is now practically under control of China so this portion of river Indus is there in control of China 
Now on map, I am showing that this path of river Indus is there in India. That is 700 kilometers. So river Indus flows through India of around 700 kilometer length on paper. Or uh, we are saying that is according to Indian map. Whatever we are saying that entire Kashmir belong to India. Accordingly, uh, we have river Indus around 700 kilometers. But the parts through which river Indus is flowing, they are not actually under control of India. Uh, say, uh, somewhat, I have to show here in different color, somewhat this territory is not directly under control of India. This is COK or China occupied part of Kashmir. We are calling that territory as Aksai Chin, part of Ladakh, Aksai Chin that is under control of China. And this territory, somewhat, say here overlap is there because this water I am marking in green color. That territory was initially occupied by Pakistan and then that is donated to China or given to China. So this territory is under control of Pakistan. So we are calling this as POK, this as COK. And whatever the remaining that we have, somewhere around less than 70 km, river Indus is practically under control of India. Whereas on paper we have 700 km part and then river Indus enters in Pakistan uh, where actually supposed to be great Indian desert is there. 